All right, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I'm your host, Kieran Tross, once again, and I'm here with another how-to video. As always, I like to keep these videos short and sweet and straight to the point. So let's get started. Let's open up storage accounts so we can now get access to our lifecycle management and see how that works out. So I'm already at my storage account. I'm going to click on Cloud Scholars Learning. And I'm going to go down here to lifecycle management. And basically what lifecycle management does is this offers you the ability to change how you access your data within the storage account. So what you want to do is make sure that data that is needed has the highest priority, which is hot. And then data that isn't needed to save yourself some cost, you can then drop it on the cool archive and then eventually get to a point of saying, all right, you know, it, it reached a uh, period of time that you're just like, I'm fine with it being deleted. But as always, that's up to you and your organization. So we're going to come here and click add a rule. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, data cost savings. Data cost, no, let's just call it data tiers. We'll leave it as that. And we'll apply the rule to all blobs in your storage account or you'll limit it to certain blobs and you can filter it out. Right now, we're just going to keep it to that scope. And in the blob type, you can even do block blobs or pen blobs. It's really what you have there. Uh, we'll leave it as the first option. Because uh, once you learn this, you can, you can modify whatever you need it to be. And then the blob subtype. So what I want you to pay attention to is right now it says details and it says base blobs. If I were to remove that, you see at least one blob subtype needs to be required. And then you can go to snapshots and then you can also go to versions. So we're going to go through all three of these. Okay, now here we are on the base blobs. This is the first one that we chose. So base blobs is going to say base blobs were last modified. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to, if it hasn't been modified in the last 30 days, then we can choose delete move to cool storage, move to archive. We're going to go to move to cool storage. Then if they weren't modified in the last 60 days, we're then going to go say, let's move it to archive storage and call it a day, right? We'll leave it there. Now for our snapshots, if they were created more than 10 days ago, we're going to go 20 days and we're going to go straight to archives. We don't really need them that much. Then we're going to add a, another one. And then if they haven't been accessed in 50 days, I'm just making up something right now. You can move it to cool storage, which that really wouldn't make any sense, but there's still an option because you never chose it. Or you can say delete blob snapshot. So we'll just do that, do it that way where we delete the blob snapshot. There's always another option because you didn't choose the last one, which is the cool storage. So that's why it's going to be there. But for now, we're just going to do the mix and match so you can see what different options and the combination of choices you can make. And for the last, for the version, we're going to say if it hasn't been accessed in the last mm, 10 days, we're going to go move to cool storage. Then if it hasn't been accessed in the next 20 days, we're going to go move to archive storage. And then we're going to go, if it hasn't been accessed in the last 30 days, we're going to delete the blob version. So we click add. And then once we're done doing that, then we have a data tier, right? We have a rule here for enable for the blob type blob block. And you can have multiple rules here, right? So you can change it up and then you can say where you want the blob, the scope to be. So it rules all blobs in your storage or you can limit to certain ones. Now we don't have other blobs here just as a new storage account created. So you won't really be able to filter it out that well. Right. So that's one of the reasons why that's not showing up. But as of right now, you can apply the rules to all blobs in your storage accounts and you should be fine and you can have different ones. So I'll just call this one second tier and we'll just leave it as base blobs. And what I'm going to do is actually let me change that to second rule just so you can see it. And we'll say anything that is. 15 days, we're going to, actually, I'll just do 60 days. We're going to delete the blob, right? And then we're just going to click add, and that's it. 
So you also want to make sure that these aren't conflicting with each other. Um, you could kind of run into a situation there. So um, I don't really remember what I put for here, to be honest with you. Obviously, this is just for, you know, showing you for, you know, informational purposes. But I just wanted you to see that you can have multiple rules here, whatever you like. And then let's just say if you click here and you say, hey, you know what, I want to disable, delete this one. You can delete it or you can disable it, either one that you want to choose. So that pretty much sums up lifecycle management and how you can go about um, saving money on cost. Um, I would definitely recommend using lifecycle management in production. Uh, it definitely saves you a lot of money, um, depending on how much uh, data is obviously used in that storage account. But storage accounts can get pretty messy. Uh, so lifecycle management is definitely the way to go. So I hope this video you found uh, definitely helpful. Um, thank you for the time to listen to this video. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. See you next time.